I'm Deputy LaSalle with Suffolk County Sheriff's Office, and I'm the Gretna Public School School Resource Officer. Today, we're going to discuss the Standard Response Protocol, or SRP, and how it pertains to you. The Standard Response Protocol, or SRP, is based on, not on individual scenarios, but on the response to any given situation. SRP utilizes a specific vocabulary, but allows for great flexibility. The premise is simple. There are four specific actions that can be performed during any incident. When communicating these actions, the action is labeled with a term of art and is followed by a directive. Execution of the action is performed then by active participants, including students, staff, teachers, and first responders. The four actions are lockout, lockdown, shelter, and evacuate. We will discuss these more in detail in just a little bit. With the Standard Response Protocol, or SRP, every action has a specific instruction of what to do in a crisis. When announced over the public address system, the action and directive are repeated. Lockout. Secure the perimeter. Lockout. Secure the perimeter. The purpose of a lockout is to keep the perceived threat from entering inside the building. The threat outside the building can be anything from criminal activity in the area, such as a warrant being serviced, civil unrest, or perhaps a dangerous animal or other situation outside the building. Once a lockout is announced, staff will lock all outside doors and allow no one to enter or exit the building. Let's take a quick glance at this process in action. Now, go back to the original painting. There. Lockouts are typically called for by law enforcement officials or Does administrators. Good morning, Grand High School. Okay, law enforcement issue in the area. All right, we will be going into lockout. Thank you. Once the lockout has been issued, administrators will make the announcement over the PA system. Gretna High School, we are currently in a lockout situation. Please secure the perimeter. Teachers, please check your email. Once the announcement has been made, staff will check their emails for any further information. As a precautionary measure, magnets should be removed from the doors in case the situation were to escalate. But during a lockout situation, within the building, everything is business as normal. Exterior doors should never be left open and unattended. In the event of a lockout, officers and administrators will walk the building, making sure all the exterior doors are closed and the perimeter is secure. If there are any practices, activities, or events happening outside of the building, those coaches and teachers will be notified. Mr. Kale? This is Mr. Kale. Mr. Kale, we are in a lockout. If you have your class outside, please return them to the building immediately, please. <laughs> Roger that. All right, let's go. Let's go. Uh, Once notified, Staff will immediately bring students inside the building and secure the perimeter. Again, the purpose of a lockout is when there's a perceived threat outside the building. Once a lockout is announced, there are several actions need to be accomplished by students and staff. We'll start by discussing what actions are taken by students. The first action is very simple. During a lockout, you are directed to enter the building as quickly as possible. This notification is made over the radio system to the staff members outside. Again, during a lockout, no one is permitted in or outside the building. Once everyone is inside the building and the perimeter is secured, all outside activities are suspended until the threat is alleviated. The same thing is true at the end of the school day. Depending on what's going on, we may have to stay in the building a little bit longer. Students that walk home may have to call their parents to come pick them up. 
will now discuss the actions needed to be taken by the staff members. Once receiving the word that the school is going into a lockout, the staff members will bring all students inside the building and notify any other staff members who may not have a radio. Staff members will check and secure all exterior doors. During a lockout, you will need to increase your situational awareness. Teachers should verify that everyone is still in class. It is also a good idea to note the time that attendance was taken. And again, in most cases, it is always business as usual inside the building. When might a lockout occur? When there's a threat or a danger outside of the school. We talked about some, here are a few more. For example, a bank robbery, high-speed chase, suspicious person, riots or demonstrations, a custody issue, or maybe a fire in the neighborhood. Who can call a lockout? Well, a student who sees a threat or an issue by reporting it to a staff member. A teacher by reporting to the main office. More likely, the school receives the call from the law enforcement agency and should initiate the lockout within the school. This should occur without having to go through a chain of command. What about during passing period or class changes? Most of the time it is business as usual. Normal and building class changes occur. At our schools where we use modular buildings, it may be a good idea to bring staff and students into the main building. Can we leave the school? Usually not. There is something dangerous near the school. This means that even if the school day ends, we may have to stay in the building until the threat is mitigated. We just spent the last few minutes talking about the lockout. Now we're going to discuss a lockdown and how that relates to you. A lockdown is used when there is a threat inside the school building. This could be a physical disturbance, a crazy person, or something worse. Let's take a quick glance at what a lockdown would generally look like. All right, so today we are... In the event the school would be placed under angles, lockdown, so the most important things to remember, locks, so lights, out of sight. Start out just thinking about First, the, the administration right, will so announce the lockdown the over the intercom. Number one, um, whenever we rotate angles... Gretna High School, we are in a lockdown situation. Lock, lights, out of sight. Teachers, please check your email. All right, guys, everybody back over here. Back over here. As practiced throughout the school year, staff will instruct students to hug walls, corners, or any other spot in the room. They will not be visible from the outside. If you are in the hallway when a lockdown is called, find the nearest classroom. In the case of a real lockdown, Parents and guardians will be notified and will of course be concerned about the welfare of their child. Once the staff member has checked their email for further information, they may instruct students to text their parents to let them know their status. It is important that this is done right. It is crucial that students and staff stay out of sight and do not attract attention to the room. Too much light coming off of too many cell phones may do just that. Therefore, contact with parents may take place in small shifts quickly then all phones must be put away for the duration of the lockdown. If you are not in or near a classroom, it is important that you act quickly to find a safe place. Gretna High School, we are in a lockdown situation. Lock, lights, out of sight. Teachers, please check your email. Just like a lockout, a lockdown has specific instructions on what staff and students should do. Let's first look at what students should do. First, stay out of sight from the corridor window. How do you know you're out of sight? If you cannot see outside the corridor window, no one in the hall can see you. Also, sit on the floor and get as low as you can. A locked door is a proven time barrier. In active violent events, rarely, if ever, has someone been hurt who has been behind a locked classroom door. Once you're out of sight, be absolutely silent silence or turn off your cell phones in the initial stages of a lockdown. You will be given an opportunity to text your parents once things get settled. 
It is critical to understand that during a lockdown, you do not open the door for anyone. Administrators or law enforcement officers will unlock the door and release the room. Next, let's take a look at the instructions that teachers should follow. Once you hear lockdown, locks, lights, out of sight, depending on what you see and hear, you might want to sweep the hallway for students. That means take a quick peek outside for students wandering the halls. If the threat is closed to your classroom, focus on getting the door locked and closed as quickly as possible. A locked classroom door is a proven lifesaver. Immediately turn out the lights. Usually there is no need to raise or lower the outside window shades because the threat is inside the building. The goal is to get out of sight behind a locked door as quickly as possible. Generally you do not have to cover the corridor windows. Uncovered corridor windows are used by law enforcement officers to take a quick glance inside the classrooms before entering the room. Science rooms, however, often have two doors with corridor windows, making it difficult to get out of sight. In these instances, it may be beneficial to cover one or both of the corridor windows. More law enforcement agencies are recommending not sliding the red-green cards under the doorway. This is a practice we have not used in several years. Be silent and maintain student silence. Don't forget to turn off your cell phone or silence it as well. If you're with younger students, it may be soothing to very quietly read to them. A lockdown will not end quickly. You may be there a while. Remember, it only ends with an administrator or police opening the door and releasing the room. If you can, take attendance. Note if you have any missing students or extra students swept from the hall and be sure to note the time. You probably won't need to do anything with the roster at this point, but we're creating a chain of custody, and this will be useful over the life cycle of the event, especially going into the reunification process. During a lockdown, if you hear the fire alarm, remain in your classroom and remain in lockdown. If you smell smoke, respond to the greatest threat. If you must evacuate, do it from the most secure and safest location. What is the difference between a lockout and a lockdown? A lockout is when the threat is outside the building. A lockdown is when the threat is inside the building. After securing the perimeter, a lockout is business as usual. A lockdown is locks, lights, and out of sight. If you're outside and a lockdown is called, do not go back into the building. Rather, go to a safe location. If there's no staff member, students should get behind a locked door if possible. If not, they should find a space where they can close the door and hide. They may even try to self-evacuate if the threat is not in their immediate vicinity. If you're in the hallway when a lockdown is announced, such as during passing period, get into a classroom, any classroom as quickly as possible, and lock down. If the classroom is already locked, then find a place to hide. Do not go from classroom to classroom. Evacuating may be another option. Teachers, be sure to check the halls quickly before you lock and turn out the lights. Again, if the fire alarm sounds during a lockout, stay in your classroom unless you see fire or smoke fills your classroom. If you must evacuate due to the fire or smoke, the hallway may not be your best option. Consider using an alternate door, window, or any other exterior exit. In the time immediately after a lockdown is called, it is important that you remain silent and you keep your phones put away. As the event evolves, you will be given an opportunity to contact your parents. In a nutshell, that's lockdown. Let's now take a few moments to talk about evacuation. Evacuate is how to move students in an orderly fashion from point A to point B. A fire drill is really evacuate out of the building. With the SRP, evacuate is always followed by a location. For instance, evacuate to the gym, evacuate to the gym. During evacuate, here's what students do. In most cases, 
students will leave their stuff behind in the classroom. Be sure to listen for any new directions. Teachers, there may be cases where you lead your students out. There also may be cases where you follow your students out. In a police-led evacuation, more than likely, you'll be asked to lead the students out. Once at the evacuation area, teachers should take attendance and note the time. This is the time and place where you will use your red and green cards in your yellow emergency folders. Supplemental instructions are included in your yellow folders on how to use the cards. Be sure to review them periodically. Depending on the severity of the event, another option is to self-evacuate. In some cases, self-evacuation may be the best choice. If you are near an exterior door when a lockdown is called, you are at liberty to leave the building. Once outside, immediately seek safety at the church next door. If you are already outside when a lockdown is called, staff members will be notified. You should never return to the building in a lockdown situation. Instead, seek safety at the church at the other side of campus. Staff at the church will be notified once the lockdown has ended. A police evacuation is going to be a little different. Once the lockdown has ended, staff and local law enforcement will begin an evacuation procedure. It is important to be careful and thorough. In some cases, evacuation procedures can take hours. Officers and administrators will never ask you to open the door. You should never do so. Sheriff's Office, can you open the door? We're going to get everybody out of the room. Can you open the door? Doing so is putting yourself at risk and should never be attempted. Law enforcement and administrators will always let themselves in during an evacuation. Sheriff's office, it's safe. We're opening the door. We're going to get you out. Officers will go room to room, making sure yeah, each one is secure, out, and let here. staff and students here. know how the hey, evacuation will take place. Students, listen up. Teacher, I need you by the door. You guys are going to leave everything in place. Teacher's going to lead you guys out of here. There are deputies in the hall. They are going to lead you out of the building. The scene is completely safe outside. You guys are safe, okay? What we're going to do, I want you to leave all of your property in place. Leave everything here. Don't take anything with you. When I tell you to, you're going to stand up. You're going to line up behind your teacher. I want you to grab the hand of the person in front of you, the hand of the person behind you, and do not let go. You guys understand? When I tell you to, go ahead and stand up. Final single file line out this way, behind your teacher. And again, on command, we'll get you guys out of here. There are deputies in the hallway. They're going to lead you all the way out. Any questions? Go ahead and stand up, guys. All of these procedures are done for specific reasons. Staff and students will be instructed to hold hands to ensure no one is carrying anything dangerous and to reassure one another after a tense and stressful situation. To the right. Out the door to the right. Walk out the door to the right. Stay in line. Stay in line. All bags and anything else not on your person should be left behind. Any of these items could be potential evidence in the case of a crime or could be housing dangerous items. During a police evacuation, you will be told to keep your hands visible at all times. You will be told to leave your stuff behind, and you may be able to bring your cell phone. Just follow the directions of the law enforcement officers. When law enforcement enters the room, you can expect them to be loud and direct, and more than likely have their weapons drawn. Generally speaking, all the same rules apply to staff and teachers. However, there may be circumstances where you can bring your purse, your briefcase, or backpack with your school computer. Make sure you have your building keys and FOB as well as your car keys. Also, it is important that you do not forget your yellow emergency folder. You will need this at the evacuation site. Another important item to take from your classroom if law enforcement allows is your cell phone. This will enable you to communicate with administration at a later time. Once you are at the evacuation assembly area, take attendance. 
If you were able to take attendance during the lockdown, verify students in the assembly area against the roster you created during the lockdown. If everything is okay, per the instructions, you will show the green side of the card. Students have permission to self-evacuate in certain circumstances, but they're reminded to pay attention to the situation. Do they know where the threat is? Can they see the exit? Is it away from the threat, noise, or commotion? Remember, though, a locked door is a proven time barrier. Staff members, you also can self-evacuate. You're just asked not to leave the students behind. If you do self-evacuate, go directly to a safe location. That can be another school, nearby business, a family member's house, or even a friend's house. Just be sure to communicate your location with your parents, the school, or the local law enforcement. As we discussed in the lockdown section, do not open the door for anyone. During a police-led evacuation, law enforcement officers or administration will unlock the door. During a police-led evacuation, it is very unlikely you will take your personal belongings. However, if you can, bring your phone, wallet, and your keys. During a police-led evacuation, you will be instructed to hold the hand of the person in front of you and behind you. This does two things. One, it allows law enforcement officers to ensure there's no weapons in anyone's hand. Secondly, it will add comfort to those who have just experienced a crisis such as a lockdown. In some cases, during the evacuation assembly, officers will want to verify the students aren't at further risk. They may even search students and staff for other dangerous items. Now that we've gone over evacuate, allow us to spend a few moments talking about shelter. Some of you may have heard the term shelter in place. Unfortunately, there are many different things that a shelter in place could mean. With the SRP, we shortcut it to state the hazard and the safety strategy. What is a hazard? Simply put, it is something dangerous. It could be environmental, like a tornado or earthquake, or it could be something like a chemical spill nearby. Your safety strategy is what you do in response to the hazard. The public address might be just the hazard and the safety strategy, or it could be a combination of utilizing the stated hazard along with the safety strategy. In either case, they are repeated twice. For example, you might hear, Tornado, get to the storm shelter. Tornado, get to the storm shelter. In the event of an earthquake, you might hear the safety strategy of drop, cover, and hold. Drop, cover, and hold. In the event of a hazmat incident, such as an anhydrous ammonia leak, you may be instructed to seal off the doors, windows, and any vents. Also, you could be told to turn off the HVAC system. In any case, these instructions would be repeated twice. Here in Nebraska, we're not typically plagued with tsunamis. However, flash floods could be an issue. The key is to remember that shelter can be utilized for any type of hazard that would place the public safety at risk. Be sure to listen for instructions and any updates, for the situation may be very dynamic. Also, always be prepared for the unexpected. During a shelter event, teachers should try to take attendance and note the time. Here in Sarpy County, Nebraska, we need to be mindful of several other types of hazards, such as our chemical transfer stations for chlorine and anhydrous ammonia. Shelter is not only beneficial for the mentioned hazards, it can be utilized for any type of emergency, such as a medical emergency inside a hallway where you want to keep the students or staff inside a particular room away from that emergency. Hi, I'm Captain Kevin Greiger of the Sarpy County Sheriff's Office. And on behalf of the Sheriff's Office and the Gretna Public Schools, we want to thank you for your participation today in this very important training. There's nothing more important than the safety of our students and our staff, and we want to thank you for helping out to maintain that.